Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us say together, Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us, spirit. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of thy only begotten Son didst reveal his glory upon the holy mount, grant unto us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross, and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha, and they said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle, and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. 
Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Let us say together Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel, where Peter and James and John have been brought up this high mountain. And before them, Jesus has been transfigured. He has become radiant with this glistering light. He has become revealed not only as a kind and good and loving rabbi, but as God the Son. He has been taken up into his kingdom. His kingdom has been revealed, and they see the Son of Man in the fullness of his glory. 
and there with him appear the Torah and the prophets, Moses and Elijah. They are enveloped in this huge cloud of glory, this luminous cloud of God the Holy Spirit. And the three apostles are so overwhelmed, they are so awestruck that they exclaim, let us make three booths. What? Why let us make three booths? If they had said, my Lord and my God, if they said, go away from me for I am a sinful man, if they had said, hallelujah, any of these things would be comprehensible, but let us make three booths? Where in the world did this come from? One of the principal feast days of the Jewish calendar is called Sukkot. And for these days of Sukkot, if you are an observant Jewish person, you actually move out of your house. You leave your house, your TV, your air conditioning, or heater in this case, all of your belongings, and you move out into this booth, this little hut that you make. And you make it out of natural things that have grown from the earth, out of tree branches, out of vines, out of leaves, and you actually move into this little hut. In part, this hut is a reminder of the time spent by the Israelites in the wilderness, how they lived in tents, but the booth does not actually represent the tents that they lived in. The booth is something different. The Talmud tells us that this booth, the sukkah, represents the cloud of glory in which God enveloped the Israelites. So Peter, James, and John have gone up this mountain, and they've been enveloped in this cloud of glory from God. Interesting parallel. One of the great human problems is that we think of the world that we live in as reality. But from the Judeo-Christian perspective, this is a great mistake. The world, olam in Hebrew, has an interesting etymology. Olam actually comes from this word that means to obfuscate, a word that means to hide away or to make obscure. And from the perspective of Judeo-Christian theology, the world is actually hiding true reality. It's obfuscating true reality. It's making true reality less knowable, more obscure. So we live and move and have our being in the presence of God. The source of all light and beauty and joy and peace is constantly right in front of us, literally. And yet, we think that the source of our fulfillment is something else. It is having people like us. It is having a better career. It is true love. It is wealth. It is X, Y, and Z. It is fame and fortune. These are our fulfillments. And so we hunt for our fulfillment in these things when the true source of fulfillment is staring us right in the face 24-7. We are always in the presence of God. And we build our lives accordingly. We spend 40 or 60 or 100 years chasing after wind. When he, who we're really longing for, is always before us. He's giving us life and giving us health. The power to think, the power to love, all the time. In the wilderness, the Talmud tells us, the Israelites often didn't have food. They went without water, they went without bread, they went without meat. They camped in the harsh desert. They suffered brutal heat by day, brutal cold by night. But they had no confusion about true reality because God was with them in this palpable, tangible way, in this cloud of glory which surrounded them. They were very conscious that they were in the presence of God 24-7. He was right in front of them, pillar of cloud, pillar of fire, and day and night they knew that they were in his presence. And so for one week each year, observant Jewish people move out of their houses, they move out of everyday reality, and they move into a booth to remember the true nature of reality, to remember what reality really is, to remember the lies that the world tells us, to, to remember the obfuscation of the world, the way that God is hidden away in this world. And they focus on the one true, real, present reality, who is God. 
Peter and James and John, like these Israelites in the desert, have, St. Mark tells us, been in, enveloped in a luminous cloud of glory. They have seen face to face the true nature of reality. They have realized that they have been living in the presence not of a kind, nice rabbi, but in God the Son, the Word of God, the Son of Man. And we are told they did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And so their minds immediately raced to the one place they had seen this before, the one place they had been conscious of the true nature of reality before, the one place in which they had remembered this cloud of glory which had enveloped them. And their mind raced to the booths of Sukkot. How wonderful it would be if Peter and James and John came down from the mountain and forever lived in a booth, forever lived in this consciousness of being in the presence of God, of him in whom we live and move and have our being. We're constantly conscious of who Christ really is, what Christ really does, what Christ is really doing for all of us, how transformative and amazing their lives would be. Well, today, in the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God and our Gospel, through our liturgy, we also have ascended Mount Tabor with Peter, James, and John. We have stood face to face with Christ as he is transfigured before us in his glory. We have seen Moses at one side, Elijah at the other, and we too have been enveloped in that cloud of glory. We have been reminded what true reality actually is. And so what will take place when we descend from the mountain? What would change in your life? if you are constantly aware of living life fully in the presence of God, if every word that you spoke was spoken in the consciousness of you were saying this right before Christ, if every dollar you spent had to be passed through the luminous cloud of God's presence to be spent on something else, what would your life be like? If every thought you had was formed in the consciousness that it is being thought here in the presence of God, that you're doing all these things not just in church, but in the presence of God's holiness and love and goodness and beauty, in a sense in heaven itself. What would your life be like if you lived your life from the perspective of a booth, always remembering that true reality is God himself, that true reality is his love, his protection, his peace, his joy, and that nothing, not poverty, not danger, not sadness, not aloneness, not even death itself, can come between you and God. I would encourage you to live in the booth, to live in the cloud of glory, to spend the rest of today, the rest of this week, and maybe even the rest of your life remembering that you, here and now, are in the full presence of our loving God and Father. Amen. Let us say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. 
and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church in the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Hector, and Kay, our bishops, and the reverend clergy of this parish, active and retired, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially our president and our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor, especially June Spellman, Patty Moyer, David Hooper, and Karen Crestenson, and all those whom we now name, either silently or aloud. and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We give thee hearty thanks and pray for those who celebrate their birthday this week. Leanna DeShong, Mary Lou Geis, Sandra Lavke, Stephen Reeves, Richard Speller, Marsha Healy, Glenn Reed, Gigi Riggs, Myrick Browning, Barbara McGrail, Steve Ann Wilson, Jay Silveria, Susan Uresti. And for those who celebrate their anniversary this week, Chris and Brenda Gutierrez, Bob and Kathy Finch, Steve and Sally Geneva. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen and protect our armed forces in every peril of sea, land, and air. Shelter them in the day of battle and in peace keep them safe from all evil. Endue them with loyalty and courage, and grant that in all things they may serve as in seeing thee. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We humbly beseech thee, O Lord, to guide and enlighten the staff, teachers, and students of Grace Episcopal School. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear especially Dave Pedersen and those we now name.
beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Good morning and welcome to our 8 a.m. Right One service. You may notice a few changes in the way things are being filmed. I'm afraid I am solo today, operating the cameras as well as uh, as uh, the liturgy, so it's just me and music, um, but it's, it's wonderful to be with you. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so we will have a 6 p.m. online service, and then we will also have a um, so drive-through imposition of ashes. All those times, there are two different windows which will be doing it, both before the service and after the service, and all that information is in the e-weekly. Ash Wednesday, of course, is the beginning of the season of Lent. This is a season of prayer, fasting, and the giving of alms. So I would encourage all of you to think about what you can do to make Lent real for yourself. If you have an interest in discussing your Lenten discipline, what you're going to do to take on extra prayer, to take on extra acts of mercy and charity, um, to take on, on a fasting discipline, please feel free to make an appointment with myself or with Mother Marianne. You can shoot us an email and we can meet over Zoom or phone or whatever. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who hast made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify. With thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of prayer and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant it by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, 
Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.